for now what situation stands in India is uh, in, in context of India, you may be happy to know that by an act of parliament, every corporate has to spend certain part of net profit for CSR. It is an act, it is a law, it has to be obeyed. Every corporate, there are certain analytical criteria, but every corporate has to spend 2% of net profit for CSR. From this, you can imagine that uh, CSR not only has become ministry, it is becoming part of a larger framework where people are and society and the government realizing that it has to be rather uh, made a kind of way of doing business. So this act was passed in India in 2013, making compulsory for certain category of corporates to spend 2% of net profit for CSR. By and large, these are the eligibility criteria. Their turnover should be for certain limit. Uh, net worth should have certain limit. Net profit should be 7.5 million or more. If either of the condition is complied with, that company will come under the orbit of the law and they will be required to spend 2% of the net profit. Now, just see the coverage. 16,000 companies are covered now under the and the annual expenditure on account of this inequity, US dollar 30 million. Every year, these companies are required to spend 30 billion for CSR activity. This is the law of the land. Now, the end also says this activity can be considered where if company does some work, that can only be considered as a CSR activity. For a law, for a bigger country, it was necessary that there should be some boundary condition. So these are the broad thematic areas where companies are required to spend. If they spend under these criteria, these thematic areas, then that expenditure will be counted as a expenditure towards CSR in context of the net. Broadly, in a thematic area, and there is an explanation, government has given an explanation that the thematic area should be interpreted liberally so that corporate may get a sense of flexibility also. And there are certain do's and don'ts, for example, any activity undertaken solely for the benefit of employee will not be considered as a CSR activity. Even it applies to foreign companies. If foreign companies are operating in India, the net profit will be determined on the basis of India only. Any activity undertaken by any corporate outside India will not be committed to about 2% of the net profit. Caveat is that any company can't make any contribution to any political party. Any activity undertaken in order to comply with the statutory obligation will not be taken as a CSR expenditure. For example, if we go back to the thematic area, we will find that activity under the environment are eligible for 2% of CSR expenditure. But if any company has to comply with the Pollution Control Act, that expenditure will not be taken for 2% of the CSR activity. The theme is that any activity undertaken for a doing a normal business is not to be accounted as a CSR activity. And there is one very important uh, part of this enactment which I must describe to you. If any company doesn't spend 2% of CSR activity, is there, any, is there any pain and problem? Company will be punished also. Act say, no, something will not be punished. They will be punished only if they don't report the reasons for not spending. 
any company doesn't spend 2% of uh, net profit in a year, they are not punishable, subject to the condition, if they have reported in their balance sheet or a statement of uh, this annual account, that these are the reasons or account of which the company failed to spend 2% of the If they don't report, then they are punishable. Even they can be put behind bar also, provision is this. And the most important part is this, that if no government has got no authority to examine the relevance of justification given, if there is an irrelevant justification given for the common understanding, governments have got no authority to review that decision. That means, if the company fails to spend 2% and report giving a kind of irrelevant reason, the company will not be so the concept is report and compliance, and it was also necessary in order to satisfy the many investors who were willing that if we go to India and they are obliged to pay 2% of the net profit, then it is a kind of tax. So they have been given liberty that yes, if you don't able to spend, give the reason. But reasons are not subject to any kind of scope. So under this scenario, we were also skeptical that how corporate will respond. There is no punishment. Anybody can write that you do on account of my other engagement or expansion of business. I have not spent 2% of it. I am free. I am not be punished. But surprisingly, the outcome of one year of operation, it was operating from 1st April to zero, one year. So one year operation, it was a life. So the outcome is based upon analysis of uh, profit and loss amount of thousand companies. It gives a it gives a signal that corporates have positively responded to the whole situation. About this reference I made by Mr. Dr. Fred also, that by and large, people want that they should do give back to the society. And these data corporate do you will see that 60% of the corporates out of thousands, they have been district nearing 2% of their profit for CSR activity in spite of the fact that if they should have given reason, they should have gone strongly. So this gives confidence in the human psyche of the people as well as good behavior of the corporate as well as indicator that social pressure and peer pressure is is changing the business paradigm. So this is a very important statistic and rest are matter of details. And this is also important. If you compare the government company versus private sector, private sector has done well. 52% of the private sector, they have spent more than 2%. In case of government company, 23% have spent more than 2%. So this is a very positive signal, and people feel happy that corporates have uh, responded very positively to the issue. Now, Dr. Fad has also requested in there that a certain question should be answered. The first is whether CSR interventions are aligned to business operations. The answer is that one term. Because when we look at the thematic area, those are related by and large to the social issues. So, as situation extends, as the act extends, CSR interventions are not, alive, are not aligned to the business approach. Whether CSR initiatives are contributing towards self uh, sustainable development goal, answer is yes. There are 17 indicators. By and large, thematic areas, they correspond to sustainable development goal. What would be substantial outcome? This is a million dollar question. When we look at the figure, that the annual contribution coming out of this enactment is about 30 billion years. That constitutes 0.5% of the government budget as regards social security. So, very drastic uh, outcomes. We don't feel that it is coming out of this, but yes, it will add to the uh, benefit to the society. And the last thing, does it contribute to growth of social business? Answer to this question is, briefly Dr. Fred has described the salient features of social business as enunciated by 
professor in this. Even in this act, under the thematic area, there was mention of social justice. But during passage of the bill in the parliament, that was delayed. But there is a provision that any corporate can contribute to the corpus of any, any NGO or non-profit making company for undertaking such type of work. So there is a window open where CSR activity can be channelized for creating social services. So there is a window, but last year operation indicate that no such thing is there. And strictly speaking, uh, I don't foresee in future that uh, social business defined by Professor Yonos will be strictly followed by the candidate in promoting the social business. Because they say that uh, any activity should be taken in which shareholder should be the community members. That is a difficult terrain, but in the act, there is a bit corporate can contribute billion of dollars as a corporate to an NGO, non profit company, for addressing social business, social problem on a business level. In doing that, Dr. Fay will also be of view that I should give some detail about living project which has got large funding. So, this is regarding project Sakti of Hindustan. You all know about living. Same way they are having a create Hindustan River. So their distribution channel was that is called wholesaler and then retailer and so on. So there are six uh, about point one six uh, one million villages in India. So if you were by struggling with the situation as to how to reach this uh, these villages, then they found that in villages there were self imposed. They targeted less self those self-help groups. They picked up two self-help groups. They made those self-help groups as their retailers. So even a self-help group, a consulting of 20 women, now they are selling their products to the villagers. So in the process, they were able to at least enlist 71,000 71, such women who are now involved in the business and it is a kind of this micro business and they are, they are, it has added to their supplementary So this is a good example which has been able to at the scale. After if I started in 2000 and at the report of the Stanley Park, break even the action by 2004. And here you have to notice one thing, that expenditure incurred on empowerment and training of the people, those are part of CSI. And when they are selling the goods, those are part of business operations. So it's a very good example so far the CSR activity of any corporate instance. So this is all about the uh, scenario of corporate social responsibility in India as described in the challenges also. And the rest uh, we are will be taken up with the question and answers. Thank you.